All right, everybody, I'm sure all of you are already aware of the event at the NDA where alleged bandits attacked the Defense Academy in Nigeria. And the events that followed, you know, where, where in the federal government began to pursue media personalities, presenters, reporters, and guests on here just for revealing what everybody already knows. Yeah, perhaps because it carries weight for such people to come out and uh, say those things. I have Barista Inibi Hefyong joining me today to discuss this particular uh, issue. And then we want to take it one at a time. Just three questions and then we, we see how, how far we can go with this. Barista, good evening. Just say hi to everybody in the house. Oh, good evening. Thank you for having me. Great to join you. Uh, sure. It's our pleasure here to have you. So quickly, uh, when you got the news of the attack on the NDA, uh, did it get to you? What was, your, what was the feeling? Were you shocked or were you not surprised? If you were surprised, why? If you were not surprised, why? I, I, like, like most Nigerians, I... I received the news, the reports of the attack on the Nigerian Defense Academy with utter shock hmm. and consternation because the NDA, the Nigerian Defense Academy, is symbolic for several reasons. It is a national institution it represents the very epic of military training. It is an institution where the best of our armed forces are trained. You can describe it as a military university. The NDA is not just some academic facility. It's not a conventional academic institution. Like say, the Usman Danfudio University or Amado Bello University or University of Lagos. On the contrary, it is a military facility, highly restricted. It is a place that someone cannot just have access to without meeting certain checks would have been subjected to rigorous or what is supposed to be rigorous scrutiny. It is also a place that presumably should be well guarded, well secured, heavily fortified. So when you have that kind of facility, infiltrated, penetrated by terrorists that the Nigerian state is now calling or now calls or calls bandits. Really, it is a national embarrassment. It is a shame on the country. It is a reminder that this regime has failed. And for me, I do not understand why anybody should treat this with levity. So the attack on the Nigerian Defense Academy exposes the sheer nakedness, the monumental incompetence, the unprecedented failure, the national embarrassment, the scandal that the Buhari regime has become. For these criminals, these terrorists, this gang of murderers and rapists to invade the Defense Academy kill military personnel, and even abduct, kidnapped a high-ranking military personnel. And guess what? Have the audacity to demand for ransom. <laughs> what that portends, what that indicates, what that exemplifies, what that exudes is that terrorists find comfort, they find solace, 
they are shielded. They have a sense of empowerment under the Buhari regime. So oh. this is a shame on the regime. It is a further indictment on Buhari. And guess what? This is happening under a commander-in-chief, in quote, who is a retired major general of the Nigerian army, a former head of state, somebody who prides himself as a veteran of the Biafran Nigerian Civil War. And yet, the Nigerian Defense Academy can be so reduced, desecrated, by how many people? How many are there? How many? Just a handful of, of, of hooligans that are being empowered by the state? This is a shame. And, and till now, no resignation. Nobody has been fired. The defense minister is still in office. The chief of defense staff is still in office. The chief of army staff, the chief of air staff, the chief of all these chief of staff, service chiefs, they are still in office. Mm. The commissioner of police in, 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 in Kaduna State is still in office. Mm. This is a state where most, I think apart from Abuja, most, with the exception of Abuja, I stand to be corrected, mm. of our military installations are domiciled, are located. And yet, you tell me that this, these terrorists were able to infiltrate the NDA and commit such havoc and kill and murder. None of them was arrested. So, not even one. Hmm. There is no report. Why was there no reinforcement? Why was there no counter-attack? Why were they not repel? How was this possible, the Nigerian Defense Academy? It is indeed a shameful thing. It is indeed a national tragedy. It is indeed a national embarrassment. Well, Indy, I, you, you, there are some things you said, and part of, part of it sounded like an allegation, where you said the bandits, a handful of them, backed or sponsored or empowered by the states. It sounded more like an allegation. When you say empowered by the states, I mean, how did you come to this? And in responding, can you just uh, factor in the fact that uh, when people like Sunday Igboho and Nam Kano were agitating for cessation, I mean, quickly or promptly, the federal government labeled them terrorist organizations. But in the case of these people who are launching attack on military bases, kidnapping and abducting even military generals and majors, and demanding ransom on them, most of the times the federal government will release them again and re I mean return them, incorporated them back to the society, and even give them what Europeans call a shabby, you know, give them uniform, and even say I promise them that they can even come back and become president later. Then finally, the presidency said. You, you may not call them terrorists, but bandits or unknown gunmen, which citizens are fondly called unknown known men. But then uh, you are saying they are empowered by the state. How did you come to that conclusion? It's not how I came to the conclusion. The evidence is, is overwhelming. The facts are before us. The indices is not contestable to begin with to begin with does it not surprise you that this regime has now succeeded in their public relations strategy for terrorists by describing them as bandits and not terrorists which is what they are because they have an agenda you can't tell me they do not have an agenda this has gone beyond what the what they refine call a business. No, you cannot have this well organized act of terror, destruction of military facilities, infiltration, killings of hundreds, if not thousands, of citizens. And you say they are not terrorists. What are they? What is terror? What is terror? 
Well, what has Sunday Boho done? No, what I'm asking is, what has Sunday Boho done? That is worse. Defending. What has Nam Nekano done? That is worse. Protecting the so, southeast. What I'm saying is that they are empowered because the government is complicit. There is clear, clear, apparent, indisputable lack of political will by the Buhari regime to stem the tide of this act of terror, to stop the killing that is going on. The government has shown itself unwilling to stop them. They have not been attacked the way they're supposed to be attacked. Rather, we see the government doing what? Pandering to terrorists. We see the government making silly, very silly, provocative excuses for them. We see the government trying to differentiate what they are doing from other non-state actors like IPO or Eastern Security Network or Islamic Movement of Nigeria. We see a deliberate attempt to shield these people from justice. How many of them have been arrested and put on trial? How many convictions has Buhari secured against Boko Haram members for the last six years? I challenge you, I challenge the regime. How many terrorists, members of Boko Haram, or the so called bandits, or murderous hate men? Yes, they will say it is a state offense. But we know, governors have said it, that these people are being protected. Even when some of them are arrested, they are released at the end of the day. So you cannot tell me that they are not empowered by the government because who is paying ransom to them? When you have Shegumi publicly, he's not hiding it, hmm. coming out to speak carelessly the way he does, provocatively the way he does, endorsing criminality, even stigmatizing, and attacking the media for exposing them in the name of ransom, in the name of dialogue, is that not state protection? Has Gumi been questioned by the SSS? I am asking you. Yes. Can you tell me, sit right now at this moment, that the entire intelligence architecture of Nigeria from the Defense Intelligence Agency to the State Security Service to the National Security Advisor to the Intelligence Department of the Police and all apparatus of the Nigerian state cannot de detect where these people are hiding, cannot trace where they get their arms from, and even at the point of payment of ransom, that has become a daily thing. Just today, I read that a captain, the son of the Senate Majority Leader, was killed. Now, last son. Are you telling me that the whole Nigeria that was able to trace and abduct, kidnap Namdi Kanu through a extraordinary rendition, as known in international law, that a, a country a regime that can abduct Nabi Kanu in Kenya and can trace Sondibo to his house, kill his followers in a commando style, kill hundreds of members of IPO and Eastern Security Network, kill hundreds of shites that that same regime, you are telling me that if they want to stop them, they will not be able to stop them. I totally and wholeheartedly disagree with you. So when we say that they are being empowered by the regime, what we are saying is that this regime has afforded them a fatal ground to fester. And we don't need to argue this. See the number of school pupils that are being arrested. Look at what the nonsense that some of the northern governors are doing, like Masari of Karsina. 
Look at what some of the northern governors are doing in the name of amnesty for bandits. They are negotiating with them. We have seen photographs, pictorial evidence of our government officials, either at the state or the federal level, with these criminals, with these terrorists. We have seen them with prominent Islamic clerics. Has any of them been invited to even make a statement on how they... Are you saying they cannot be traced? They are communicating with phones. What is the essence of the so-called linkage of BVN that Pantami is making noise about? Why have they not been able to trace them? So the government knows who these people are. And the government is not willing to bring them to justice. There is no other way to look at it. This also applies to the killings by the murderous hitmen. See what is happening in Plateau State. So the hands of this regime is stained with the blood of Nigerians. There's no other way to look at it. This regime has blood on its hands. The complicity is so obvious. This is a sectarian regime. Buhari has turned Nigeria into a sectarian country. He's running a sectarian regime, sectarian policy. There is, me... and I spoke about this in the past, that there is an ideological parity to some extent between this regime and Boko Haram. Because why are they so comfortable? Why? Why, why do they feel so bold, so empowered? to so even, a, you know, attack the Nigerian Event Academy. This can only, you know, tell you one thing, that this regime, they know what is going on. And look at how they are going after everybody that is speaking against it. Only the guilty is afraid. So nobody can tell me seated here that if this government wants to end the killings in the Northwest, in the Northeast, in the North Central, and even in the South, that they will not end it. The government is unwilling to end it. That is the truth of the matter. Okay, uh, let me lead the next question with a reminder. You know, at the point the federal government said that, well, these people are Nigerians, so, and that people should allow them have uh, their land. I mean, allow them come into your land, do whatever they want to do, graze their cows and their cattle and all that. Subsequently, uh, we heard from people like Gariba Shewu saying that if you don't take it, but if you don't accept it peacefully, uh, they will have to take it by force. And then subsequently, after South South governors came together and said that, well, uh, we can't release our land by virtue of land use as it's vested in us and our people do not want it uh, for us to forcefully cede land to you. Well, the federal government continued to insist. And you remember Malami, your colleague, uh, who is now the attorney general of the federation, uh, saying that, well, they have to go and look for some old grazing routes in the Gazette, and they must uh, continue to allow them to work. Well, if you don't accept it peacefully, you will definitely, they will have to force their way in using all this gun. Do this marry together? And before you answer the question, do you not think that, um, you know, uh, allowing them have this land that they want might be the solution to all this killing at the end of the day? I, I'm trying to know the people you are referring to. If it is headsmen, you know, or uh, Maeti Allah, the so-called Katu Bidas Association, whoever you are referring to, what I know is that under the Land Use Act of 1978, which has also been made part of the 1999 Constitution, As an existing law, I think under section 315 of the constitution, every land in every state invested in the governor in trust for the people of that state. Buari does not have control over one hectare of land in any state, it does not. Buari has no control, no right over any land in any state, in any part of Nigeria except the Federal Capital Territory Abuja. This is the position of the law. 
This is the position of the Constitution. Nobody has argued this on the basis of law. This nonsense about grazing roots or gazetted grazing roots is what it is. It is nonsense. It cannot hold up in any court of law. There is no grazing roots. Because even if they were colonial grazing roots, those grazing roots had become redundant. They had ceased to exist upon the promulgation of the land use degree that later became the land use act. So let us not even agree about this. There are no grazing roots anywhere. And I'm waiting for them. Let them publish the gazette. The gazette is supposed to be a public document. It's not a personal note of the president that should be hidden under his, his bed, in his room or that room, as he, as he put it. A gazette is supposed to be official document of the Nigerian state. They should publish the gazette for Nigerians to see. They claim they have, I think, even about 27 states or there about, over 20 states. They have located grazing roots. Where I come from, my home state, Akwaibo, or where I practice Lagos, I would like to see where the grazing roots are. <laughs> I want to know what grazing roots they are talking about. Well, coming back this to... Coming this back president... To... No, let me finish on this point, please. Okay. This president has a history of insulting the intelligence of Nigerians. It is an insult on Nigerians for a man in 2021, in the 21st century. It is a primitive thinking. It is a backward thinking. It is a colonial thinking. It is a stone age mentality. For somebody to still be talking about grazing roots, grazing reserves in this age, in this time, when evidence shows that the only solution to this is, is grazing. Ranching. It's got, it's, it's, it's got to ranching. And what are we even talking about? Certain states have passed laws banning open grazing. Northern governors have publicly said they are against open grazing. So whose brief is Barry holding, holding? Who is this speaking for? Is this speaking for Nigerians? Or is this speaking for terrorists? I think at this point we have to ask that question. Is it the president of Nigeria or the president of terrorists? Who is he speaking for? They claim that these men were foreigners. They cannot approbate and reprobate. They cannot say in the morning they are foreigners. And in the night, you say Nigerians should run over their land to foreigners. So is he the president of Niger Republic? Is he the president of Sudan? Or is he the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria? And if they are Nigerians, what part of Nigeria are these people from? Where is their ancestral land? Because every, any person that is from a part of Nigeria that is indigenous to Nigeria must have an ancestral land. Where I come from as an Ibibio man from a quite book state. I, if I go to my community, I can point out my ancestral land that this is where my ancestors resided. This has been our ancestral land. Where is the ancestral land? Why are we even why are we talking about cattles? In the 21st, why are we debating the welfare of cattle? What is this nonsense about? Is it not how to take care of animals? It is the president's <laughs> priority. That's why. No, is it not cattle? We are. Is it not cattle? We are talking about meat. Why are we talking about this when the health sector has collapsed? When doctors are on strike? When citizens are being killed? When the Naira have become useless? They have just increased tariff for electricity. Infrastructure is down. Our educational system is in shambles. And you have a man in 21st century talking about cattle in the morning, cattle in the night, cattle in the afternoon. This is a very terrible thing that has happened to this country. And I think Nigerians are determined to resist it. There is no one inch of land that should be ceded. That's my opinion, not one inch of land. This is supposed to be a private business. Anybody that wants to take care of cattle, to raise cattle, to go and buy land for ranching or get it under a list but for you to say you want to use the military you want to use military might military might to forcefully take over people's land 
it is just not going to work. This is our country and we are going to resist it. Look, this regime has a lifeline. It has it's 2023, Buhari will be out of office. It's not as if he will be there forever. So he cannot he cannot rewrite history. So that is what he wants to do. This is nothing but about forceful, forceful takeover of people's land, ancestral land. This is what this is all about. Whether you are talking about Ruga, whether you are talking about grazing roots, whether you are talking about grazing reserve, it is just absolute nonsense that we are still talking about grazing, grazing, cattle, cows, cattle, cows. What type of country are we? When the world is going to space, when we are in the age of digital currency, what are we talking about? We are still talking about cattle. It is a shame. I want to quickly bring you back to the the issue with, you know, Nam Dekano Igbohu, and then these other ones. You know, the federal government said that the difference in the the reason for the difference in their treatment is because this uh, Nam Dekano and Igbo are asking to break the country, and as such is uh, treasonable. But that these ones are simply doing business, you know, and then. If they are doing business by just kidnapping people and asking for ransom, uh, would you say that that business got to the NDA? NDA um, the, would the presidency also deal uh, with this attack on the NDA as business, bandits doing business, killing people and doing business? And now that they have begun to go after people who are talking about it, you saw what happened, the event that followed. On channel TV, where an ex commodore came out to, to expose that they have been doing this for long and that they, the government knows them. And then they started going after the, both the presenter and the guests. Uh, don't you think the federal government, even after the attack on the NDA, still does not want to see these people as terrorists, but as bandits or businessmen? What are, why are we talking about dividing the country? Buhari has already divided the country, Shekou. <laughs> yes, what I'm saying, uh, yes, I, I get it, but I'm saying no, what that I'm saying is that you will, expect, you will expect the government, the, I mean, the federal government to begin to at least backtrack and say, no, this is act of terrorism. But instead, no, I, they are going after I those who are even talking about it. I get your point, but I want you to understand clearly that Buhari has already divided the country, country. Hmm. by his actions, by his policies, by his utterances. He has already divided the country. Buhari does not believe in one Nigeria. He does not believe in one Nigeria. I'm telling you, he does not. When somebody is saying he cannot treat 5% and 93%, even though the math didn't even add up, equal, he has divided the country. When he has already made himself the president of an ethnic group, when he's already running a sectarian regime based on religious and ethnic bias, when he has elevated nepotism to a national policy on account of his satanic appointments, on account of his divisive statements, Buhari has already divided the country. Look at the, the, the research that just came out to show that Nigeria has never been this divided. So I think it, it, is, it, it begs the question what they mean by dividing the country because as far as I'm concerned, Buhari has already divided the country. And what is Nam the Kano and Ibo conversation all about? You cannot say people don't have the right to say they don't want to belong to Nigeria anymore. It is right to self-determination. It is recognized under the African Charter, I think Article 20 of the African Charter on Human and People's Rights Ratification and Enforcement Act, which is a Nigerian legislation. It is also recognized under the UN Charter the United Nations Charter. People have the right to say they no longer want to belong to a country. They need a country of their own. You cannot criminalize that because it is a right. But don't, let us not pretend, this is a, tra is a tragedy that has happened and we just have to live with it. He has always been a divisive figure. He has always had this sectarian and begotten ideology. And that is obvious 
from his policies, from everything he has done. That is obvious from the way he has treated Sunday Poho, from the way he has treated IPOC, from the way his officials, from the military spokesperson to the recent statement from the IG ordering policemen to go after members of IPOP and ECN, Eastern Security Network, or ESN as they are called, whereas there has been no corresponding force against those, the terrorists that they romantize, they call a romantic name, bandits, against Hesmen, against Boko Haram. We have not seen equal passion. He has already divided the country. That is why they are treating Namdi Kanu as a criminal. And these other people as freedom fighters. That is the way it is. That is why they are going after Sunday Boho, killing him, killing his supporters, targeting his house, destroying his properties. Whereas those who are kidnapping school children, say who? Imagine for a second, just think about it, that the Nigeria, Nigerian Defense Academy was located somewhere in Aba, in Abia State. <laughs> just think about it. Fight on dance and, right now. And members of Everybody Eastern Security it. Network, or IPOP, invaded the NDA, attacked the NDA, killed soldiers, kidnapped a major, and demanded ransom. Shenwo, imagine what would have happened to the Southeast. What would have happened to the Ibo? What would have happened to Abia State? Python dance, all you, sort just, of dance. you just can imagine it. Just mm. think about it. What the response would have been. So when people say Nandi Kano and Sonny Boho are trying to divide Nigeria, they are just being hypocritical because the chief, the, the divider in chief is Buhari. He has divided the country. He has not made any efforts to unite us. All the policies that he has shown interesting. That he has pursued with vigor. They are polarizing, they are divisive. They are aim at pitching one religion or one ethnic group against the other. That is what is going on. Look at even people that are making incendiary statements. The man that was threatening to kill Christians because of the very Unfortunate killing, murder, the murder of 12 innocent Fulanis who did not deserve to be killed, who are victims of failure of the Nigerian state, but just happened to be Fulanis who were returning to their base in Ondo State. They were unfortunately killed. They did not deserve to be killed. Mm. But look at the response. Pantami said Buari could not eat. Shehu, how many people have been killed in Jos? Indigents of Plateau State have been killed. Allegedly in retaliation. Since those innocent Fulanis were killed. What has been, have you seen one statement from Buari? From Gabashehu, from Femi Adeshin? One. As Panther may come out to say Buari has lost sleep, those corpses we saw dumped in front of the Plateau State government house. Have we seen any response from the federal government? The, the Islamic cleric, the sheikh who was threatening to kill Christians, as the SS has invited him, the way they have invited some Christian clerics, Shengu, have we seen it? Hmm. We have not. Have we seen a forceful reaction? We have my, last, my last na, na, question. Na, Shengu, Shengu. Nigerians are not stupid. Buari should not think we are all dumb, deaf and blind. Nigerians are not stupid. It is only a fool that will not see that this country has been divided by Buari. It is only a blind, deaf and dumb person that will not see that this is a sectarian regime that has already split the country along religious and ethnic lines. And this is unfortunate. So you cannot be accusing Sunday Boho and Nam the Kanu for what Buhari is already carrying out. By himself. He has already, he has already polarized the country. Hmm. What are we talking about? Look at how biased he has been in everything. 
Well, my last question for to you for tonight is uh, talking about Sunday Buhu uh, Namdekano. You know, those who were arrested in Sunday Buhu's house after uh, some were killed by the attackers or the invaders, uh, the DSS and others sent by the Nigerian uh, government. The rest who were arrested, the courts already said release these people. And it has been the hallmark, the characteristics of the DSS to always shun court order. And everybody is asking the same question. Is the DSS above the law? Does it, does it not make nonsense of what you guys practice law? Part of the problem I have with this, and I think it's with the, sec the last section of the Nigerian media, is that name DSS. It is part of the impunity. SSS. Yes, you have to call them by their name. If we are going to address their impunity, their persistent flouting of court orders, their disregard for democratic institutions, their contempt for the judiciary, their larger-than-life attitude, we must stick to their name. State Security Service. That is what is established under the National Security Agencies Act. The name, again, is State Security Service. That was when, when they arrested Shogore, they said, oh, Shogore said, DSS will cease to exist. And I said, good. When we go to court, we will prove to you that DSS has never existed. It does not exist. Department of State Services or DSS is a fiction. It does not mm. exist. What is not the law is the security service. So I keep quarreling with the media when they keep saying DSS. Call them by their name. State security service. You cannot hold them accountable except you start by addressing them properly. Why, why are they not comfortable with their name? Why do they prefer this DSS? Because that DSS has become a semblance, a single show of impunity. So we must also ascend of our protest and show of indignation for their contempt for the judiciary. Address them strictly. If you want to sue them today, you cannot sue DSS, by the way. You cannot sue State Department of State Services. You can only sue State Security Services. But to your question, I believe the judiciary must also take the blame for this discretion. And I said that as a lawyer, painfully, that our judges unfortunately are complicit Some of our judges, not all of our judges, some of our judges are complicit in the impunity of the SSS, the State Security Service. Do you know why? They indulge them. They give them soft landing. They refuse to stand up to them. Even when people are ran before our judges, before our courts, and there's an application for the people to be remanded in the custody of the Nigerian Correctional Service, our judges will still remand them in SSS custody. Our judges are part of the problem. And we lawyers must own it. The legal profession has failed to stand up to the impunity of the SSS under the military. The days of Justice of Chico Di Fokuta. Go and read the case of Military governor of Lagos State and Ojuku. Go and read what Oputa said. Go and read how Oputa and the other judges of the Supreme Court. Read how our judges stood up to the military. Go and read how judges refused to sit until suspects were produced before them. But if you bring content proceedings against the director of the State Security Service, the DG of the SSS, Show how many judges in Nigeria will have the courage to commit him to print to the correctional service to sentence him. Which mm. judge will be bold enough to say that the director of the SFS should remain in prison or, or now called correctional center for one month, for two months, until he has complied with the court order? Let judges refuse taking federal government cases. When people are brought before you and are in the custody of the SSS, an agency that has shown 
unwillingness to abide by your order, release them unconditionally. Over time. Mm. Release them unconditionally. But our judges still impose impossible bail conditions on people that are being held by lawless agency. And you tell me the judiciary is not complicit? The judiciary is complicit because if an agency of the executive is treating your orders with contempt, are you not supposed to stand up to it? What is the MBA doing? The MBA is weak. What is the MBA doing? So let us not just say, stop at condemning the SSS, condemning Buari. The SSS has shown itself unwilling or incapable of abiding by the rule of law. It is for the Nigerian judiciary lawyers and judges to stand up to it. And this is my recommendation. This frivolous application for remand orders. Let us say we go to magistrate. Look at what the nonsense that is going on in Abuja. They will just go before an area court, before a magistrate, and get ridiculous detention orders, get orders to freeze people's account. You saw something, they don't even obtain orders. Look at the impunity, judges are complicit. Look at the freezing of the account of the NSAS protesters. Look at the manner I pop was prescribed. This the, the judiciary, the impunity under the Buari regime would not have gotten this bad, would not have gotten to this a formidable level if the judiciary had stood up to his oath of office. If judges had lived up to their oath of office. So the judiciary has brought this shame on itself and we have to own up to it. I'm telling you, Shehu, judges are complicit. There is no other way to look at it. Look at people that are being kept in SS custody. Go and look at the bail conditions. Look at like the Boho, Sonny Boho support, supporters. Even after they have perfected their bail, they still refuse to release them. They even have the audacity to ask the courts to reverse bail. Bail that is at the discretion of a court. Bail. So for somebody that is presumed innocent, that is being released on condition, you are even saying you should not be released on bail. Did they kill the president? What did they do? What, 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 what did they do? And our judges still continue to indulge them, to make excuses for them. So let the judiciary take the larger blame until we call a spade a spade. We learn to say the truth in this country. We will never, never make forward, make progress. Judges must take the number one blame. And I'm not saying all judges, some of our judges and lawyers. And I wanted to make a point that the SSS, they have a legal department. Why have their lawyers not been debarred? So, let 10, 10 lawyers working for the SSS lose their practice license. you see a difference. Take away their license. Those lawyers who are representing them, those lawyers who are aiding them to do this, this nonsense, suspend their head of legal for one year from practice. Use them as scapegoats. You cannot fight impunity with, with, from a point of witness. What is the NBA doing about it? Until we take responsibility as a profession. You can't keep condemning the SSS, State Security Service. Oh, they are lawless. Oh, they don't have the judges stood up to them. So imagine if somebody is being detained and a judge says, I am sitting in this court. I hereby make an order directing the Attorney General of the Federation, directing the head of legal of the State Security Service to produce before me in the next two hours. So, so, and so person. Shehu, imagine if a judge has courage to do that. Hmm. And if they don't do that, the judge, as part of his order, recommends them for discipline. Shehu, why do you think it is difficult for judges to do this? I why don't know. Exactly? I, I do not know. <laughs> I do not know. If the judges are, will tell us. I do not know. Why are our judges are not willing to stand up to them? I know the frustration I face. There's a case I'm currently handling, our firm is currently handling. I don't want to go into the details that involves DFFS. And I know the experience I have had. Our judges are very reluctant to hold these people accountable. And it worries me. So let us stop talking about SSS is lawless, SSS is the best court orders. What has the judiciary done 
Have the judiciary not aided them? They have a federal ground. They know there will be no consequence. The government is still filing charges. The cases are still being attended to. Let the judiciary also stand up for itself. It will stop, I can tell you. Well, la lastly, for tonight, I, I, I know I said that before, just, but just as a follow up because you, you touched on it, and I, it quickly reminded me of something. Uh, remember that one of the lawyers, or some of the lawyers for Mazenam de Kanu came out reporting that they were stripped, they were humiliated by the SSS when they wanted to have access to their client to see him again uh, as a matter of routine checkup on him, that they were asked to remove their shoes and where they passed, they were, I mean, that level of humiliation, do you think somehow it will begin to make the NBA sit tightly, or do you think it will still mean nothing at the end of the day? Not the current NBA. Yeah, no. Olimide Akata has, you know, shown some, uh, you know, appreciable. It's not significant, but some effort, little effort to speak out occasionally against executive impunity. But that is a far cry from what is required. The NBA today, unfortunately, I'm speaking generally, has become a toothless bulldog. It barks occasionally, but doesn't bite. Hmm. That is, and what are you saying? The agency you are talking about, if they, they, they can desecrate, invade the national, Shemu, SS has invaded the Nigerian National Assembly. National Assembly of the Federal Republic of Nigeria till today, no personnel of that agency has been sacked. It's said that, that Sibanjo removed. What serious consequence have you been put on trial? Have you looked at the Legislative Houses Powers and Privileges Act? Under that act, that conduct is a criminal offense, invasion of the National Assembly. It's a specific criminal offense under the Legislative Houses Powers and Privileges Act of 2017. Go and look at it. Invading the National Assembly is a grievous offense. Hmm. Why has that not been put on trial? This is the same agency. That invaded the federal high court in an attempt to arrest you. What have they not done, Shew? What but what has been the response? This is a military dictatorship. Wearing barriga, a civilian barriga. That is what it is. Now the last let's close on this, and you don't have to answer it. Would you therefore support the clamor that let's just break this country and let Buhari continue ruling his own section and let everybody govern themselves? No, I, I don't believe splitting the country would make any difference. I don't support splitting. But I don't support Nigeria as it is. But don't divide the country. That's my position. We can change the country. I don't believe splitting the country is a solution. Because if you split Nigeria, you will only have Nigeria in multiple multiple Nigeria. The same corrupt elements will still be in charge. So I don't, I don't believe in splitting the country. But I don't also support Nigeria in its current form. Thank you. All right, thank you so much, Barista, for taking our time to be with me on this show today. And I want to also appreciate everybody who has taken our time to uh, participate, listening and commenting. Uh, I promise subsequently to be able to integrate other uh, gadgets to allow for calling. I know some of you also have questions to ask Barista or to even contribute and uh, uh, maybe just buttress some of the points he raised. Thank you so much once again, Barista. I will keep in touch with you. Thank and you. We'll continue to advance this conversation subsequently. Everybody. Good night. Good night.